Hello, I'm Dr. Manuel G. Saldivar. I'm a cognitive psychologist and a university faculty member. This video is one in a series associated with a textbook by Jeffrey Levy entitled Psychology, the Science of Human Potential. This is a free open source textbook that's available for anyone to use. A link to this textbook can be found below this video in the description box. The purpose of this video is not to cover every single point in the textbook. Rather, it's meant to give students an overview of the contents and the big ideas, the main themes of every particular chapter. So let's get started. In prior chapters of Lovey's textbook, we've explored the way that nature, or heredity, and nurture, or environment, have interacted over time to produce the modern human species. As humans, our typical behaviors and ways of thinking are the result of those interactions. In chapter 11, Lovey discusses how the sciences of medicine and psychology have developed bodies of knowledge that can help individuals who face behavioral or emotional challenges brought on by a misalignment, as I'll term it, between nature and nurture. To put it another way, in the prior 10 chapters of the Levy textbook, we've explored the ways in which human beings have evolved and developed as a species and discussed the stuff that affects our development and thus has resulted in the kinds of behaviors that are typical of human beings. But what we want to ask now in chapter 11 is what happens when we have problems? What happens when things go wrong for humans? What can we do in those situations? Psychiatry is a medical specialty that has evolved, focused on diagnosing and treating mental health disorders using medication and other medical interventions. Clinical psychology, which is covering or concerned with related issues but is a separate field. Clinical psychology emphasizes psychotherapy, psychological assessment or testing, and non-pharmacological, that is non-drug-based treatments for mental health issues. Psychiatrists are medical doctors. They go through the typical physician training in medical school. While psychologists also have to earn doctoral degrees, they are not medical doctors. Psychiatrists, as medical doctors, can prescribe medication, while psychologists cannot. At the time of the creation of this video, which is 2023, I'm aware of just one state in the United States, California, that allows psychologists who have gone through special training to prescribe medication in certain instances, but that's the only exception that I'm aware of. Whether that changes in the future is kind of an open question. So generally speaking, if an individual has a, a mental or emotional disturbance that's so severe that it requires some kind of drug-based treatment, usually as part of other kinds of treatment, including therapy, a psychiatrist or other medical doctor would have to be involved in order for that prescription drug treatment to take place. Both psychiatrists and psychologists base their diagnoses of mental health problems on what's called the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, which we usually call as shorthand the DSM. This is a publication of the American Psychiatric Association, or APA, and it is a manual that provides classifications of mental disorders using common definitions, common language, and standard criteria. Please note, especially if you are a psychology major and plan to go into future studies in psychology, confusingly, there are two APAs. There's the American Psychiatric Association, which abbreviates itself as APA, but there's also the American Psychological Association, which also abbreviates itself APA. Be sure you're not confusing the two, especially when it comes to the DSM. Now, the DSM catalogs syndromes and diseases in the following 18 categories. These are described in much more detail in Levy's textbook, so I'll refer you again to chapter 11 of the text for more detailed information. But the purpose of this slide really is to lay out for you in one image the broad nature of the DSM and the wide variety of mental health concerns that are within the purview, typically, of psychiatry and psychology. The takeaway from this chapter is that clinical psychology and psychiatry share some common roots, but in modern times they've diverged 
such that they're two separate professions with separate training tracks, separate career paths, and really day-to-day separate jobs that clinical psychologists and psychiatrists have in terms of their everyday work. However, certainly on the level of individual patient cases, there will be many circumstances quite frequently where you may have psychiatrists and clinical psychologists collaborating in order to make sure that one particular individual is receiving the best care possible. That concludes today's video. I hope you've found this overview helpful for your own studies. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video useful. It really helps my YouTube channel grow. Good luck with your continuing studies of psychology as well as with the rest of your college career. Take care.